Welcome back to the Real Frame Reviews. I'm Scott Icebox, and today we're reviewing Thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds, which was technically 2017. Uh, I believe it came sort of out of the, um, the cycle of festivals and everything and started to uh, get some ground. And in theaters, it was at a local theater of mine, so I decided to go and check it out. And uh, this movie is uh, about two young women who are in... Um, sort of an upper class society and one of them is sort of street smart uh is really able to read people very well and the other is more more intellectually smart um books and such and uh they slowly find out that together they are able to um sort of get things that they want and uh come up with uh, a plan to to do something to better one of their lives. Um, this film is written and directed, uh, I believe, by a guy named Corey Finley. I think he's new, so I, I might have that wrong. Um, but this this movie is something that's far beyond uh, what I thought going into it. Um, you know, the, the premise that I gave you is not even scratching the surface of what's going on in this movie. Um, it is very... Uh, I think it's very... Um, cerebral in its approach to what it's trying to say and what it's trying to do. Um, it stars Olivia Cook, who is a phenomenal actress, uh, Anya Taylor Joy, who is also in this, and Anton Yelchin, who is, you know, I didn't really know of him um, before his untimely passing. Um, went back and watched Green Room and saw this movie, and he is excellent in this. Um, Olivia Cook and Anya Taylor Joy are absolutely fantastic as the two leads, and the way they are moving back and forth, the dialogue that uh, uh, Finley has written for them, it is phenomenal. I absolutely love this movie, and it, it what's so great about this film is that it's able to take its time, um, not only with the dialogue, not only with the shots, um, but just the way the film moves, and it's only an hour and a half uh, um long and i i think this movie is is just it's really nice that it takes its time um another thing i absolutely loved was like i said earlier the dialogue um the dialogue in this movie is snappy it's witty um there's a lot of great techniques going on in this film and they're putting them together and they mesh so well um it there is you know there's quick there's quick cutting as the dialogue gets faster. Um, there's slow pulls in as uh, a character is off screen, helping us as the audience think of things that are, are happening. Um, they really do a great job with you know show, don't tell. Um, there's, a, so, there's a gruesome act in the beginning of this film that we have no idea what happens because we, don't, we never see it. And it helps the audience play that through their minds, the things that happened in the beginning uh, are are obviously pushed through and talked about the entire film. And I think this is what's really great about this movie is that it's able to do that and still be interesting without actually showing you what's going on. And obviously the classic example is, you know, like horror films not showing uh, the evil character so much to build up the tension. Um, this, this film... This film is, it, it, it really does a phenomenal job, um, not only with, with that, but also the way it's using its frame. I think Corey Finley does a really good job. It actually has sort of uh, uh, calls to Alex Garland, Alex Garland who did Annihilation and Ex Machina and the use of his framing um, with the characters out towards the wings of the frame, you know, way over here or way over there. Um, and you got to sort of decipher what that means in the mind of Corey Finley. Um, and also understanding why there are certain frames where the person's right in the middle, just like I am. And I think that's really great because when I go into a movie, I don't want to just be fed what to think and what to react to. Um, I also want to be able to decide what uh, is going on and, and help help myself sort of understand the situation or what the filmmakers and the writers and the actresses and the actors the cinematographer was going through and what they were deciding um, when they were putting this all together. Um, the story is actually simple on the top, but is actually pretty deep. Again, it's it's really about sort of 
the mental side of of these characters and what they're going to do to get what they want. And I say that not as misleading, but that is what I took from it. I took that away. Um, and it, it's, it's really still as deep. I mean, I just got out of the theater, so it's, it's still tough. I'm still processing a lot of it, but um, just so much uh, great stuff. There are some wonderful looking shots, uh, particularly, uh, particularly a Anya Taylor-Joy walking in the dark hallway at the end is a nice uh, um, dark blue illuminated room which I thought was phenomenal. Uh, it, it is just, it's really, really great. And the, the, there are scenes with, with great tension. There are scenes that are uncomfortable. There are scenes that are absolutely hilarious. And Anton Yelchin does a really great job coming in here as a side character and adding a little bit of levity. Um, but also, you know, this sort of, the idea in his mental idea of what he wants to become and what he wants to be. And that's played off uh, quite often in this film about who these kids are going to be, um, their paths in life. Uh, one is set up to go and do some great things. Another one is sort of accepted that she's not going to go anywhere in life because of something that she did. And then Anton Yelchin's also in this position where he feels like even though he's doing something more rotten, um, he's doing something that is going to get him to uh, great heights. Um, there are scenes in this, or are, there are points in this movie where I, I sort of um, felt a little detached. Uh, that's not to say that it was, you know, huge chunks of movie that I was not into. Um, but again, I also have to process a lot of this movie because it is not just a film that you go in, come out, and be like, oh, that's what they wanted to tell me, and this is what I feel about it. Um, it, it, it keeps you thinking. Uh, Thoroughbreds for me is a three out of four star, but definitely has a chance to really bump up. Um, I'm really on the fence about three, three and a half for this film. Um, so it's a high three out of four, maybe a low three and a half out of four stars for me. Get a chance, if you can, to check this movie out. It's only going to take an hour and a half of your time. Um, it's great acting. Uh, the, the writing is actually, um, you know, plays very well into the other aspects of the film. Uh, and the directing has a lot of thought behind it. And it's it's unique. It's unique thinking. It's unique uh, situation. And, um, yeah, go check it out. Uh, that's all I got for you. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you saw Thoroughbreds, what you thought about it. Um, Scott Neemi 2 on Twitter, S-C-O-T-T-N-I-E-M-I-2, or hit us up on the comment section. Peace. I absolutely nearly forgot to say what a great job the Foley Effect artists did in this film. There are so many great scenes uh, where the Foley Effects are sort of helping us um, dive into the character's mindset at the time. It's, it's creepy, it's odd at certain moments, so... I, I completely forgot about the Foley effects. Um, again, check out this movie, Thoroughbreds. Uh, leave a comment. Thank you, guys.